Hi everybody, my name is Alex Frey. I am a process engineer for Sepro Mineral Systems and today I'll be discussing the commissioning of the gravity circuit at Atlantic Gold's Moose River project in Nova Scotia. First, a little background on Sepro. We are a mineral processing equipment supplier based out of Langley, BC. We are founded as Falcon Concentrators in 1986 and have over 30 years of expertise in gravity concentration. In 2008, Falcon purchased a UK company Sepro and rebranded as Sepro Mineral Systems. And over the past decade, we have expanded our product lineup to include a wide range of mineral processing equipment, everything from crushers to scrubbers, of course, gravity concentrators, and even intensive leach reactors. So today, we will be discussing Atlantic Gold's Moose River Consolidated Project. Uh, the first phase of the project consists of two deposits, the Tokoy deposit located 95 kilometers northeast of Halifax and the Beaver Dam deposit located another 35 kilometers northeast of Tokoy. The Moose River process plant is located less than one kilometer from the Tokoy deposit and will be processing Tokoy ore for the first six years of mill feed. The Moose River process plant uses a conventional gravity cyanidation process with a nameplate capacity of 6,000 tons per day. It has a modular three-stage crushing circuit processing approximately 400 tons per hour, producing a minus 14 millimeter ball mill feed. Grinded, grinding is conducted in a single stage, three and a half megawatt ball mill in closed circuit with hydrocyclones. A portion of the cyclone underflow is fed to the gravity circuit, which we will touch on in more detail in a minute. The cyclone overflow reports to the leach circuit, which consists of one leach tank and six adsorption tanks, all with a live volume of 1300 cubic meters. The loaded carbon reports to a 6-ton pressure Zadra circuit, with the LO8 reporting to a dedicated electro-winning circuit in the gold room. Uh, leach slurry is detoxed using the SO2 air process before being pumped to the tailings management facility, which consists of a conventional rock dam, effluent treatment plant, and engineered wetland. So as mentioned previously, today we'll be focusing on the gravity circuit. The gravity circuit was designed to treat one-third of the circulating load, or in this case approximately 300 tons per hour of cyclone underflow. The cyclone underflow flows by gravity to a 5 by 12 vibratory scalping screen, with the plus 3 millimeter screen oversize reporting back to the ball mill feed. The screen undersize reports to two parallel Falcon SB1350 concentrators. These are 30-inch high G4 centrifugal concentrators, each with a unit capacity of approximately 150 tons per hour. The falcon tailings also report back to the ball mill feed, and the gravity concentrates, which are discharged approximately once per hour, flow by gravity to the concentrate storage cone of the SLR-3000 intensive leach reactor. The SLR, or SEPRO leach reactor, is a batch intensive leach reactor specifically designed to treat high-grade gravity concentrates. The SLR operates at high cyanide and dissolved oxygen levels and uses high-energy agitated leaching for fast leach kinetics. The other unique feature of the SLR is SEPRO's patented drainage and filtration process. Essentially, the solid liquid separation step is conducted within the leach reactor, with the reactor discharge being a clear, high-quality, directly electro-winnable pregnant leach solution without the need for thickeners, clarifiers, or other filtration equipment. So just to give you guys a better idea of how the SLR works, I'll go through a brief process description. Uh, the SLR is made up of two primary components, the concentrate storage cone and the agitated leach vessel. Concentrate, periodically discharged from the falcons, is collected in the concentrate storage cone. Weight sensors track the mass of concentrate stored within the cone until a full batch is collected. In this case, approximately 3,000 kilograms. When the cone is full, the concentrate is pumped to the agitated leach vessel. Initially at Moose River, we were using a vertical tank Salas style pump for this concentrate transfer duty. Uh, this pump was found to be prone to air locking and overflowing, which could lead to losses of gold. Uh, during the commissioning process, uh, this vertical tank pump was replaced with a Canamex peristaltic pump. Uh, peristaltics have been found to be ideal for this application because they are great for pumping high percent solid slurries. Uh, the pump is directly piped to the cone discharge and provides a constant suction during the concentrate transfer, which prevents blockages. When not in operation, peristaltic pumps act as a valve, so in the event the knife gate doesn't seal properly or opens unexpectedly, the concentrate batch is not lost. And finally, from a security perspective, uh, vertic or peristaltic pumps are superior to vertical tank pumps as there is no visible gold remaining in the pump box after each concentrate transfer. 
So after the concentrate has been pumped over to the uh, leach vessel, the reactor is topped up with process water, the agitator starts, caustic is added to raise the pH to safe operating levels before cyanide addition begins. When cyanide addition starts, the leach cycle commences. Dissolved oxygen levels are kept elevated through the addition of hydrogen peroxide in conjunction with the dissolved oxygen sensor. Currently, the leach time at Moose River is 13 hours. This is due to the presence of some very coarse gold. It is not unusual to see gravity gold pieces in excess of 10 millimeters at the Moose River plant. So the leach proceeds for 13 hours, at which point we're ready to shut down and drain the solution. Before I explain the drainage process, I should first describe the hardware within the leach tank. The rubber-lined leach vessel contains a rubber-lined agitator, baffles for good mixing. Within the tank, we have two of what we call well points. These are vertical tube screens that protrude from the base of the tank and up through the concentrate bed. And at the base of the tank, there's two of what we call center drains. These are 30 centimeter diameter screens uh, that are directly piped to our pregnant solution transfer pump. Now I should mention here, this pregnant solution transfer pump is a positive displacement peristaltic pump, which means that this pump can suck rather than blow like a conventional slurry pump. So after the 13 hours of leaching are complete, the first uh, shutdown step is to add some flocculant to the reactor. This mixes briefly before we start to gradually, over the course of two minutes, ramp down the agitator. This gradual ramp down, it creates a stratified solids bed with the coarsest, densest particles at the bottom and a fine, almost impermeable slimes layer at the top. After allowing the bed to consolidate for a few minutes, the pregnant solution transfer pump starts and the solution drain begins. So during the pregnant solution drain, the base of the well points, they are not actually connected to the pregnant solution transfer pump. And these well points, they just act as a shortcut for the pregnant solution to bypass the impermeable fines layer before the pregnant solution transfer pump draws the solution from the well points on the peripheries of the tank through the stratified solids bed, which acts as a sand filter and out of the center drains where it is pumped to the pregnant solution tank in the gold room. You can see in the photo on the left that the uh, pregnant solution from the Moose River SLR looks basically just like water. So after the pregnant solution drain is complete, a uh, rinse cycle is conducted in order to recover any residual gold or cyanide solution that remains trapped within the concentrate bed. This is accomplished by refilling the reactor with process water, starting the agitator, and using the same flocculent ramp down and drainage procedure, with the first rinse solution also reporting to the pregnant solution tank in the gold room. After completing the pregnant solution to drain and rinse cycles, the leach slurry is ready to be returned to the grinding circuit. Once again, the reactor is filled with process water, the agitator starts, and at this point a tank bottom disc valve opens, and the slurry flows into the tailings transfer pump where it is pumped back to the cyclone feed hopper in the grinding circuit. After the tailings discharge is complete, the reactor is ready to receive a new batch of gravity concentrate, and the cycle starts again. Since May the 1st, 2018, cycle times have averaged just over 18 hours, allowing for up to one and one quarter batches of gravity concentrate to be processed every day. So now that you guys know how the SLR works, let's get back to the Moose River gravity circuit. So early on in the feasibility stages, it was recognized that the Moose River ore had a high gravity recoverable gold or GRG content. In fact, a lycopodium study in 2006 predicted that a gravity circuit would reduce cyanide consumption by 30%, and the final tailings grade from 0.11 to 0.03 grams per ton. This equates to a 6% increase in overall recovery. So during the feasibility testing stages, over 30 gravity tests were conducted to fully characterize the ore body, with GRG values ranging from 50 to 70%, with an average life of mine GRG value expected to be 61%. Now the GRG value of an ore body is said to be the theoretical maximum recovery by gravity that can be approached but never actually achieved at industrial scale, with typical plant recoveries of GRG ranging from 30 to 80%. The main factors that contribute to how much of the GRG is recovered, aside from the performance of the concentrators themselves, are the size distribution of the GRG, of course coarser gold is easier for the concentrators to recover, um, the percentage of the circulating load treated, Obviously, the more tons the concentrators see, the more gold they will recover. And next is the cyclone efficiency. This is actually one of the most important factors, as cyclones are in essence gravity concentrators, and an efficiently operating cyclone will keep the GRG within the grinding circuit and give the concentrators multiple chances to recover the gold before it is ground fine enough to report to the cyclone overflow, 
And finally, the gravity how the gravity concentrate is treated. In the past, shaking tables were the most common process for upgrading gravity concentrates, but over the past few decades, intensive leaching has become the preferred process route as uh, intensive leach reactors are fully automated and have much higher stage recoveries than a shaking table, almost always greater than 95%, and typically in the 98 to 99% range. So before commissioning of the Moose River plant commenced, uh, based on the known gravity circuit layout, the GRG value, and the GRG size distribution, a modeling exercise was undertaken to predict how much gold would actually be recovered by the Moose River gravity circuit. Taking into account the relatively coarse GRG and robust gravity circuit design, we were quite generous with our model, which predicted a GRG recovery of 86%. This equates to a 53% overall recovery by gravity, or about 4,100 ounces of gravity gold per month. So commissioning of the Moose River plant, it commenced in October of 2017, and about three and a half months later in late January, the grinding circuit was starting to stabilize, and most of the big issues around the mill had been resolved. At this point, we decided to conduct a gravity circuit audit in order to benchmark the current circuit performance and to try to identify any potential areas for improvement. Over the course of a day shift, samples of the mill feed, cyclone overflow, cyclone underflow, and falcon tailings were collected. The falcon concentrate grade from that day was determined by back calculating the grade of that day's SLR batch. We plugged these values back into our model, and this is where we were at in January. The January audit results are shown in green and compared with the feasibility predictions in orange. As you can see, the gravity circuit was performing quite well in January with a gravity recovery of 79%, but there was still room for improvement. Um, some other key findings from the audit were the scalping screen ahead of the Falcon concentrators appeared to be overloaded, with a lot of the feed misreporting to the oversize and thus bypassing the gravity circuit. The GRG value in January was 59%, which was very close to the 61% from the feasibility study. Uh, in January, the average SLR batch time was just over 21 hours, which was acceptable, but we knew there was room for improvement. And finally, the cyclone underflow, or feed to the gravity circuit, contained more than 23% minus 38 micron material. Uh, this much fine shouldn't be there in the cyclone underflow, and this was an indication to us that the uh, cyclones were not operating efficiently. So after reviewing the audit data, the three main areas identified for improvement were to first improve the scalping screen efficiency. We actually estimated about half of the screen feed was misreporting to the oversize and back to the mill, when in fact approximately 95% should have been reporting to the concentrators. Improving this would increase both uh, tonnage and feed quality to the Falcon concentrators. We had also had some early indications that the more SLR batches that were processed every month was leading to higher gravity recoveries, so we wanted to do everything we could to reduce each SLR batch time. And finally, we wanted to improve the cyclone performance. As mentioned previously, inefficiently operating cyclones will prematurely lose GRG to the cyclone overflow, and just as importantly in this application, having a lot of fines reporting to the gravity circuit and eventually the SLR can really slow down the SLR drainage rate. So we worked our way from the front of the circuit to the back, starting with the gravity scalping screen. You can see in the photo on the left that the screen was overloaded. Quite frankly, this screen is just too small to process over 300 tons per hour of 75% solid cyclone underflow with the industry standard 2mm screen panels. We started off by diluting the screen feed down to approximately 60% solids, which helped, but eventually we had to move to coarser 3mm screen panels. You can see in the photo on the right that this was definitely an effective solution to the screening efficiency issues and almost doubled the tonnage to the gravity circuit. However, the only downside of moving to larger 3mm screen apertures is an increase in gravity concentrator wear rates, and thus uh, there are currently plans underway to install a larger gravity scalping screen. So our next focus was on the SLR batch times. We went we started by going through the SLR automation program with a fine tooth comb and identified a number of pauses and interlocks that were deemed to be too long or unnecessary. We reduced some of these times and sped up the sequence by letting a number of steps happen simultaneously. These changes allowed for a reduction of 40 minutes from each cycle. The real game changer, however, for the gravity circuit came with cyclone optimization. This didn't happen overnight, but between January and May, the team at Moose River trialed a number of cyclone apex sizes and operating conditions, and they really found what worked. 
This led to an improvement in both falcon recoveries and a reduction in the SLR batch times. By May, the amount of minus 38 micron material in the gravity circuit feed had been reduced from 23% in January to just 13%. You can see in the table that this has actually cut the SLR drainage time in half. As the SLR needs to be drained a total of four times with the pregnant solution drain and rinse cycles, this actually reduced the average batch time by over three hours. Since May the 1st, 2018, the average SLR batch time at Moose River has been just over 18 hours. So how has the gravity circuit been performing? Here we have the gravity circuit production results since the, since the declaration of commercial production on March the 1st, 2018. You can see in the chart at the bottom that there is a very strong correlation between the number of SLR batches completed each month and the overall gravity recovery. In March, 28 batches were completed in 31 days with a gravity recovery of 42%. By June, 35 batches were completed in just 30 days and gravity recovery had increased all the way up to 58%. Since May the 1st, gravity recoveries at Moose River have averaged 56%, with an average monthly production of over 4,400 ounces. So here we have our chart again comparing the feasibility predictions in orange, the gravity circuit results from January in green, and the recent gravity circuit performance since May 1st in blue. The average gravity recovery of 56% has actually exceeded the expected recoveries from the feasibility study and represents 92% of the theoretical maximum established by the GRG value of 61%. This 56% gravity recovery equates to over 4,400 ounces of gravity gold per month, which is 300 more than the feasibility study had predicted. So now let's talk a little bit more in depth about some SLR operating data from the first year at Moose River. Since batch number one, with high energy, intense agitation, high cyanide and dissolved oxygen levels, leaching of the fine gold is rapid, with an average recovery of 60 per 62% after just two hours. The presence of coarse gold particles in excess of 10 millimeters do result in a leveling off of the leaching rate after this, but still, gold recoveries after six hours have averaged 85%, with ultimate recoveries after 13 hours of leaching, all having been in the range of 97 to 99.6%, with an average to date of 98.6%. Each SLR batch contains three tons of gravity concentrate with an average grade of 1400 grams per ton, which equates to about 132 ounces of gold recovered per batch. To date, tailings grades have all ranged from 8 to 60 grams per ton, with an average of 22. Finally, let's briefly discuss the SLR operating costs over the first year of operation. You can see from the chart on the right that the bulk of the cost of each batch is, can be attributed to reagents, and in particular cyanide. I should clarify here that there is actually over 100 kilograms of cyanide added each batch, However, only 20% is consumed in the process. After electrowinning of the pregnant solution, the remaining 80% is bled into the leach circuit where cyanide addition is reduced accordingly. Power consumption is very low. The SLR has four 5.5 kilowatt motors, of which only one is typically operating at any time. And spare parts costs have been minimal, with the bulk of the, the cost shown there being attributed to some sensor replacements and a few peristaltic hoses. This gives us an operating cost of just 99 Canadian dollars per batch, which works out to approximately 75 cents per ounce of gravity gold produced, or about $33 per ton of gravity concentrate processed. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you'd like to learn more about the Moose River Gravity Circuit or the, the SLR, please read our paper from the CMP in Ottawa. Or if you'd like to see more videos like this, please visit seprosystems.com. Thank you for listening.